All right, uh, this is your your typical club car. We pulled the uh, entire rear end out, and we had a bunch of work to do on this motor, so it was just easier to drop everything. So I thought I'd do a little video to show you some of the things that uh, you know happen when you get them pulled out. Uh, specifically, when people want to know you know how to tighten the uh, adjustment, you know, on these uh, starter generators. If you want to take a good look here, we'll get right down in here, and I'll show you. If you can see this where my finger is, you loosen this nut. So then you have your slide here, and that's going to slide and rotate this forward and backwards. These right here need to be loosened, both of these, right, so that it can canter back and forth. And here's your, your belt. It's kind of easy to see these things now that you got it out, right? So, and then, uh, of course, you know, changing a belt, you want to pop that off. And you put your new one on, take it off. Real easy light, see? Um, this unit right here had the head replaced in it. And um, what had happened was the intake valve, okay, was bad, all right, so it would blow and backfire out, literally caught this on fire and melted it, all right? So inside here was, so we put the car, we cleaned it out and redid it and, you know, put a kit into it, uh, changed the oil. And a lot of the times um, when you're pulling these motors, excuse me, move my hand there, um, a lot of, uh, you know, these covers right here, a lot of these people get in here and they're like, man, you know, gosh, it's just not coming off because way down in here, and uh, you can see here on this unit, about where my finger's at, uh, in the older style, you know, there's a, a cover and it's got a nut and a bolt that goes through it. And so what I do is, uh, in the back side there, you know, once the cover comes off, I want you to imagine this right here being, you know, around the corner, we notch it, see? So when the cover comes off, it'll slide in and you can tighten it up. But uh, some of the newer covers that, are, that come out don't even come with the actual uh, hole in it for you to put the nut through. And that's good there. So back to if you had to R and R this engine, the four bolts that go around the bottom, um, and then back here in the back side, there's studs that come off the back of the engine here and here. You know those are pretty easy to see. See if you take a good look, those are easy to pull off. Get right to them, even from the end of the cart when it's put in. But boy, let me tell you, there's one. <coughs> excuse my French there. That uh, is just something to get to. You know, I see if I can, if we can get to it. It is like way back in here. I, I can put your fingers way back inside here to try to get to it. Let me get right to the top, through the top there. You know, you and what size wrench gets in there, right? Love you guys. I love the engineers. But uh, my feelings were they could have slotted this, you know, tops, these, these top pieces here. And then you could uh, slide it down in on the studs, loosen them, and then slide them off. But that's not the case. But... Uh, Maybe that club car sees this video. It's something to do. Now, another one is, everybody wants and always asks me, Nick, um, how do I know that my uh, coil's bad or my rev limiter's bad or my igniter's bad? You know, you know, and I've done a couple of different videos and you can check those out on how to own each part of those out. But I, I always want people to look at this one right here. See that wire? We'll get real close to it. See the color of that? All right. That plugs into your chassis, you know, right up your key switch, you know. So that makes everything go dead, shuts the entire spark process off, all right. And uh, what you want to do is just make sure that this right here, you know, uh, you unplug this and then roll the engine over and check for spark first. Real easy check, okay. And then uh, at that point, you are uh, looking good. So, Nick... You know, what, what makes the fuel pump work? Well, when the crankcase is pressurized, air vacuum pumps out here, pumps back and forth. That goes up in, all right, to you, like, you know, where your fuel pump is on the side of your fuel tank, you know, and things of that nature. Um, it's just something to think about, you know, when you're working on these things. Uh, I got this off, you know, down here. I want to zoom right in here. All right. Here's your big guy, right? We all know what that is. That's the rev limiter. 
So, here's the wiring setup. It splits like a Y. One part integrates to the next, and that goes to the coil. So one, let me see if I can get that better so we can see down here a little bit easier here. Yeah, that's about right. There we go. There's your white wire, right? Right there. Okay, sorry it goes out of focus when I stick my finger in there. But here's where the, the junction is, all right? So your coil wire comes out, comes underneath, right here. That's the coil wire, the dead man switch. That goes into that little fitting right where my finger is there, okay? That comes out up to here. That's how simple it is, all right? The brown wire, excuse me, the brown wire that you see there, watch this strap right down to it. There's the brown wire that comes down and up into this unit here. Now, if you want to find out if your rev limiter is good or bad, okay, you get down here and you release, remove that bolt and relieve that from the ground. Roll it over. Roll the engine over, check your spark. And if the spark comes back, well, then this is this is bad. It's that simple. They still don't got spark. Well, now you um, know what you got to do. And that is get back inside here. I'm going to get right back down inside here and show you something. And without doing a whole lot of work, if you can get down and undo that bolt and the sister bolt to it over here, this whole mechanism pops right off. The whole thing comes right out, it'll fall right out in your hands there. And behind that, in some models of these Kawasaki FE, uh, I think 250s, 240s, you know, depending on what they are, two or FE 350s, there could be a rev limiter, and they're located right behind this plate. Back on there, sorry about that focus, but I don't have it in, like, in sports mode, obviously, for the film part. So at that point, that's what we're looking at. I told myself I'd only do an eight-minute video. It's kind of long for YouTube. But, uh, you know, these are the things that we're at, you know. And uh, so here, um, this says DR. This one's F2. All right. A1. And then... Down here, I think it's just the regular ground, you know, for that. I don't know that for sure, but that's where it's at. All right, so in about eight minutes, one seconds. I'll make another video of this type of thing after we start putting her back in.